Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And to say I planned my whole trip to Buffalo around one artifact might be an exaggeration, but it might not be. This is a Zuni rocket launcher normally slung underneath of the wing of an aircraft to launch individual rockets. However, modified for naval service to fire chaff specifically from the World War II era ships that were upgraded uh, needing a missile defense in the 50s, 60s time frame. In fact, and the reason I'm excited about this right here, New Jersey would have had a set of these in 1968. It's one of the few things uh, that we do not have anymore, and we've never seen one. If, here are some pictures of it. Notice that they're all just like of the general midships of the ship from far away. Many of them are covered with a tarp. We were vaguely aware from the ship's crew of what they were supposed to be, but we never saw one. So, this is the chaff launching system that New Jersey would have had during the Vietnam War. We're on the cruiser USS Little Rock in Buffalo, and as far as I know, this is the last place in the world where something like this still exists. Fortunately, she's decommissioned in the early 70s, and as such, retains these otherwise obsolete features that don't show up on any other museum ship out there. New Jersey's would be different for at least one reason. We had four single tube launchers just because we had extra space for them. These would have been in that midships triple stacked uh, 40 millimeter tub. Those guns were removed in 1967 and these are put there in their place. It seems to be a single tube on each of ours from what you can tell from these really grainy pictures, but we had room for four individual mounts, whereas Little Rock does not, so they crammed two together. And this seems to be the trend for the various World War II era cruisers that are modified to have this, whereas the battleships, um, well, really, New Jersey is the only battleship brought back in this time span, has the room to add extras. So it's really interesting seeing this whole mounting point. I had heard that uh, you can only launch them more or less from the vicinity of the console. We'll show you where in a second. Uh, and that you're, you're essentially manually moving them to point at a target. It's not doing anything fancy. However, this whole uh, joint here looks way more put together than I would have expected. You can see that there are some pins here that, that more or less lock it in place. Uh, so I guess you pointed at your expected threat vector. We know that there's a Soviet ship off that way or a North Vietnamese missile battery off that way. And you aim it in more or less the general direction. And then you don't want to be back here. This is a fiberglass tube that holds four rockets. You can see four holes in it. The rockets come out this end. The exhaust from those rockets, the blast, comes out of the back end. Notice that there's, there is this round gun shield that is uh, about a curator and some change tall. We're, we're a little bit over two meters. We're, we're probably at about seven feet tall here, just so that this is, if this is pointing more or less level. And you can see with the rail that this can point no lower than about zero degrees. Missiles shouldn't be coming from below you. It'll, it'll be coming uh, from in the air somewhere. So the, the exhaust gases from that are going to be coming out in roughly this area. So they made it so that it's not going to catch any other sailors walking around, and it's not going to uh, catch any of the sailors on these actual manned platforms up above us. Now, in the pictures, we can see where these are supposed to go. And I was really excited to come and, and see the, the mounting point and what it actually looks like up close. We've taken lots of pictures uh, for our own archives. But we are unaware of what other fittings would be associated with this. So coming and seeing an actual setup helps us with that in a way that we would have never gotten from a blueprint or a, a picture or anything else like that. Let me show you some of the other features of the Zuni Rocket Edition. So here we are on the back side of that curved blast shield that it, uh, protects us from the chaff rock there. And you can see this uh, like transportation case that's 
welded to the deck. This is not by any means a normal ready service ammunition locker. However, for aircraft uh, that would normally be firing Zuni rockets, this is what is they're transferred in. This will hold 15 Zuni rockets. So transferred in this, then it gets stowed down in a magazine, then the rockets are brought up individually or, or maybe even preloaded into the pods and the pods taken up from there. So they basically just welded one to the deck of the ship here and you've got ready service stowage for another 15 of these. Your launchers will hold eight. So you've got almost two full shots of these. They have to be manually reloaded uh, from the front end. So it's not a quick or simple process. Well, that's not too far off from the ch type of chaff that replaces these, the super rapid blooming offboard chaff launchers. I realize I haven't explained what chaff is in talking about this. When a missile is coming at you, it is typically a guided warhead. It is sending out a uh, radar beam to bounce off the target and heading in the direction of what it is uh, detecting. Chaff is shredded, mylarized aluminum foil that you shoot into the air, in this case. Earliest forms of chaff were just like dropping aluminum foil out of an aircraft to, to foil air search radars about how many aircraft were in a raid. But with the development of missiles, it becomes a countermeasure to those uh, that can be shot off. So in these early uh, World War II era ships that are just being converted with new stuff, they get these older rockets that just get a chaff packet where the warhead goes instead of a normal warhead like a Zuni rocket would have. So you point them between your ship and the incoming missile, you fire the chaff, the chaff goes out a certain distance and explodes in the path of the missile, and you turn your ship to a new course. This should mean that the missile once saw this big metal target, your ship was heading in that direction, and then sees that ship replaced with another big metal target, the chaff. Just cloud of aluminum foil falling out of the sky. And now your ship has gone somewhere else. So your missile will either see the chaff cloud and detonate in it, or it will see the chaff cloud and go through it and then crash into the sea, but miss your ship, which has now changed course entirely. On modern ships, you get the uh, super rapid blooming offboard chaff launchers, like I just said. Surbach, they're six-barreled mortars, essentially, built into the deck. And the mortars are turned at different angles. So you fire them all together, and they'll explode in uh, a pattern in the sky that makes this really big metal wall that the missile would have to go through. Aircraft still use something similar, where they'll launch chaff packets and flares out of the back to uh, full anti-air missiles. But uh, ships do the same thing. Even modern ships have these. And so in the 80s, New Jersey loses her old chaff rocks. They're no longer in service anymore anyway. And they're replaced with the modern Surbach launchers, which are controlled from the bridge. So uh, this isn't the only ready stowage on board. Come look over here. We've got a real traditional ready service locker right here. Uh, which may or may not be associated with the chaff rock. I'm not sure. But more importantly, you have some extra Zuni rocket launcher pods here, a pair of them. So you could replace the two that are out there. Like I said, these are just fiberglass. So there, there's probably a finite number of shots that you can shoot from them before they become deteriorated. Being out in the weather permanently, these were designed to be stored in a magazine and then... Uh, strapped under the wing of an aircraft and flown and used and then recovered by the carrier. So they're, they're not necessarily designed to be outside weathering all the time, fully loaded. Um, so I can imagine a number of scenarios in which these fiberglass pods might become unusable. And so they keep spares laying around. It might even be that in uh, a combat situation, rather than replacing each of the four pods of the chaff rock individually, they could reload these canisters with that other ready service locker, which has the rockets in it, and then just throw the whole canister on there. I'm not sure that that would be any quicker if that's what they would actually do, but it's certainly a possibility since they've got a spare set of rockets, a spare set of canisters, and the, the base over there. And these are all on the O3 level of the cruiser Little Rock, 
within a stone's throw of each other. One final facet of this system is the actual launching point itself, which is not here on this level. We're going to have to go up two levels to the O5. So now we're on the O5 level. We're two stories above the chaff rock launcher. And uh, this level was the air defense warfare platform. This is also where the five inch gunnery director and the six inch director are located. Now, like I said, this is my first time seeing the actual setup for the chaff rock launcher. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure what on this level is related to chaff rock and what is just normal air defense warfare stuff. So we've got uh, this console right here. Some of the tags have been painted over. Uh, this one down here says Director Repeat Back Selector. So this might be involved in uh, selecting where you're aiming the chaff rock. I'm not entirely sure. You've got the tar target designator right here, which would have like a binocular or something on it. You'd be looking through at your target again. I'm not sure if this is specifically part of the chaff rock system, or remember, this ship is equipped with the anti-air Talos missile system. This may be part of the generic air defense warfare uh, equipment, not the chaff rocks specifically, but this certainly is associated with the chaff, chaff rocks. This is the local control station. So this is how we could insert a firing key and fire one of those locally, which is more of the last ditch effort. In theory, if this is local, it means that there is also a main control, which is probably down in CIC, where you've got all of your radars and you're tracking this incoming missiles. If the missiles are coming at you at Mach 1, Mach 2, Mach 3, like uh, Cold War era missiles do, you're not going to have a lot of uh, reaction time between when you see a missile and when you're trying to turn the thing and push the button. Uh, so you're going to try and detect it as far away as possible with radar. The Cleveland-class cruisers that are modernized with the Talos missile systems, uh, the Galveston subclass, they have a tremendous number of air search radars, height finders, um, and uh, 3D sets installed. So you should be able to detect an incoming missile from a while away, which will give you just enough reaction time to point that chaff rock on its incoming approach vector and then fire it from down below. And if you take some damage there, well, you've got local control to take over here. So it is very interesting seeing what this sort of control box looks like. And uh, now we can go and look on where there might have been something similar on New Jersey. On New Jersey, there, uh, like I said earlier, there's the triple stack midships 40 millimeter mounts. The two lower ones had the chaff rock on it. The upper one had a five inch director on it. Um, so this might have well been on that upper level where you are protected from the blast, or it might have been at our aft air defense warfare platform, which would have been several frames aft of that, or it could have been practically anywhere else on the ship. The only major limiting factor is you've got to run these cables from it to the launcher itself. And we certainly know that they had no issues running miles of cable on New Jersey. What's another old feature of the ship? that is no longer there that you'd like to see covered in a future video. One of my favorite things about visiting other museum ships is that they often have the equipment that was removed from us over our career, or even that we never had installed, things that were planned but were never installed, such as the Talos missiles themselves. Believe it or not, there was actually a scheme to put those on Iowa-class battleships. Check the link in the description below for more information on that. But let us know in the comments uh, what you'd like to see in the future. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate and support the Buffalo Naval Park, which graciously allowed us to film their equipment today so we could learn more about our own ship. There's a link to their donate page in the description below and also to their social media where they know a lot more about this equipment than I do. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.